doesn't do anything good at blackjack. Two totally different games. So almost for every purpose, unless again we get a left-handed player on the other side or something like that, the woman is going to want to play over here about the Alley. width of her paddle without reaching. Width of her paddle, she should be over here. The guy is now <laughs> going to play over here. I can't tell you how many times in doubles I see it and the woman runs up to here and she's ready and the ball goes behind her. The ball goes behind her because he, and everybody, it's not a chauvinist thing, don't get me wrong. What it is, is Jana's going to take this whole box here and she, especially at 5 -0 level, she's going to see 85% of the balls. She's going to have to do almost all the work for our team. That's out of my control. You get the higher level you get, the more accurate they become at pinpointing the girl. And they're going to push it, and it becomes a two on one. And on our side, it becomes a two on one for us. We're going to try and pick on the girl over here. So it's not a chauvinist thing, it's not anything like that. It's just that's part of mixed. She becomes the target. So our job is to try to figure out a way to get her to play within her skill set and me to help her playing within my skill set. Now, most women's mixed teams, usually the women are the consistent one. They're over here dinking it. They're over here. But Jana, thankfully, has a totally different skill set. Jana's a fighter. She's extremely well at fighting. So when we get to the net and Jana gets a dink, what does I tell you? Get him. Get him and start that fight. If we're both at, if we're both at that net, I want Jana firing at somebody because we're going to start a fight, because that's what we—that's what our skill set is. If I get the ball, unless it's a high ball, I'm going to try and maneuver it. So me and Jenna, all, we confuse a lot of teams because we're almost a reverse role of what makes it usually. Usually I'm the control, and Jenna's our power, Jenna's our power play because she does it so well. So, we talk about this, all, there is no right or wrong way. You know, when Jenna goes plays with another guy, Rich, there's a, he's a lefty. It's a whole different skill set for her and Rich than it is for me and Jenna. Doesn't mean that she's right or wrong with Rich, but doesn't mean that that's our skill set. So does everybody understand the difference between mixed and doubles? Okay, so let me ask you. So they throw a lob, and that lob goes right here. Whose ball is that? Yours. Thank you. If they throw a lob, and that ball's right here, whose ball is that? Yeah. Janice. So Janice can go back one step, and she can hit it with a forehand, crush that ball. If she's coming over here and having to take it with a backhand, Here's why I want the, yeah. Here's why I want the ball, because number one, it's my forehand. Number two, she comes over the backhand. <clears throat> You'll find, and I'm gonna teach this a little bit, one of the advantages you have in this is lobbing over the girl, even if she gets it, because very few girls have enough power to put it away. What I'm trying to create with a lob on a girl, <coughs> I'm trying to dislodge them and create a confusion and get them out of sorts as best I can. If I can log Mary, and I can put in that corner, and Mary goes after it, we pretty much won the point. Because I guarantee you, Glenn's going after two. Now all we gotta do is get and put it over here, and there's a whole wide open court. So Mary has to know, as soon as she, that log goes up, and she can't get it from here, what she needs to do is she needs to be coming over to here, let Glenn get that, and then they'll come back in his get. Now they're on the opposite sides, but that is what it is. You know, that's part of the law. You know, we're taking advantage of on the law. So you got anything else you want to add real quick before we go to the next section? Yeah, I mean, uh, exactly. A lot of men don't like to play mixed doubles because they say, I never see a ball, right? And so I started playing with Todd, you know, guys would be like, I never see a ball, I never see a ball. First of all, that's a way of giving yourself a compliment and an insult to your partner, so don't ever say that to a partner. It's an insult. It's not a compliment. Don't do the, hey, I don't see a ball. Hey, you're going to hit me? Well, you don't hit me. That's conceited and should never happen in pickleball. And it's a, and it's really demotivating to partner when you say that but Todd decided and I asked him to play I don't think he'd be playing mixed today he you know he's got a wife who's an absolute fantastic player but the key word is it's his wife I mean need I say anything more divorce court I, I yeah I have job security because it's his wife I mean I know you're dealing with a whole lot of other dynamics when you're playing with your own partner and that's so hard point I'm making is Todd comes and takes balls and he takes them more and more and gets more as much as he can until they're going behind him that's the whole game 
they, he is going to go as far as he can to take the ball as he can until they start to go behind him and we're losing points because of it. That's how aggressive you can be to make it Starting to go behind you, you're going too far. Now, if you're playing 3 0 or 3 5, you don't have to go as far because they don't have the targeting ability to get it over to that corner. But Jan, what Jan just said is true. I got to play big. But what actually gives me permission to play big, I cannot tell you how many times over here they hit a ball. I come over here, I can't get it. And Jana hits the ball back for me. Because I know Jana's big. Jana's let me roam, but she's still got my back and she's still taking care of it if I can. Sometimes we miss it, I block your views, it, it happens. But this is where you gotta be really appreciative of your partner. Jana's over here, we're playing. She's seeing 85% of the ball, it's two on one. She's doing everything she can, they're working at her. She hits one in the net. I've seen guys, I've seen guys, Jesus, freaking Christ, get the ball. Wait a second, the lady's over here working her butt off, doing the best she can. Don't demoralize her, don't put her down. And then the flip side of that, how many guys you see come over to play big, they swing and it goes out. Sometimes all we get is one shot every two or three points. And we have to, as a guy, you have to create something quickly. You don't have a lot of time as a guy in mix because if I hit one to Mary, chances are Mary's just gonna put it right back to Jana, I'm back out of the point. So I have to lob, I have to fire, I have to do something. So Jana has to forgive me on my errors that I make because sometimes I have to be more overly aggressive than I really, really wanted to be. So make sure you kind of support each other and know what they're doing. That being said, kind of watch the play. If you just see a pattern where it's the same problems over and over and over and over, as a team, try and make an adjustment. That's where we would go to John and say, John, we're having this problem. What are we doing? Trying to say, well, let's try this and it'll work. You know, so just because I'm the guy doesn't mean I always have to come over here. If Jana can get it with a, here's a good point. Anybody know Erica Gonzalez? Anybody ever seen? Good friend of Jana's partner is a Jana. She has a phenomenal two-handed backhand. You put that ball here, it's coming 150 miles an hour. It's going right down that line. So as a guy, I, if it's coming here, I want to stay out of the middle a little bit on her. Let her rip that ball because that's her skill set. So again, set your team plan up according to your partner. And then the next step is according to the people you're playing. So like Rich, if we were playing Rich and say Mary, we would have a totally different game plan than we were playing this young man and Mary, just because left is a, Rich is a lefty. So it's as simple as that. Um, now I remember, every time I ended a segment, the last two or three times I was here, I'm gonna tell you the exact same thing. Make the ball bounce. Do not get used to having a firefight where you're quit hitting it to the person and hit it to a spot. Hit it to, so where Mary's at, you see where her shadow is with her hand? Don't even move, Mary. Don't even budge. You see where her hand is on that shadow? That would be my spot right now for Mary. I'm going to try and hit that spot. Because if I go to her hand and she has a, a Glenn Holman, who's going to, right where her hand is, what do you think Glenn's going to do with that ball? Glenn's going to step in there and he's going to protect Mary, which he should. And now, so my window gets tighter on that. So when me and Jana play, one of the first shots, we'll tell Jana to return that ball straight. The reason why, that first ball, I'm coming over here and I'm trying to take that first ball. Uh, Kyle Thien and Boyd, that the guy first started teaching me, he said, I want you poaching on the first or second shot of every mixed game, every single time. I don't care if you make it or miss it. Once they come over here and see me hit a ball from here on a return, that now tightens their window up to Jana. They're like, oh man, we've got to get this. We now have to hit that ball right here to Jenna. Next thing you know, a lot of times, what happens, Jenna? That ball they hit and it goes out. So, guys, the first point or two, you have to play big. You've got to get in their head. You get your paddle up. You slap at it. Try to keep it in. Slap at it. Move back over. Let her come back up. And then you're in position. And again, guys, your position is now here. Does everybody see that? My, because Jenna's position is over there where her hand is. Cover the net. So we got we got this pretty much covered between her and I. We've got this whole court covered. Unless Mary comes over here, hits it behind me, and then we'll make an adjustment. <clears throat> uh, so let me see here. Let's start with returns. Returns are very important in mix. I think 
probably one of the most important shots. Where I think the fourth in doubles is one of the most important shots. I think the return is one of the most important shots. So when they're serving to Jana, and I'm over here. Let's get a couple people out here. So me and Jana will actually communicate on everything. We gotta call so I will tell Jana where I want her return to go on every single shot. Not that she doesn't know how to play to it. It has nothing to do with that. What it has to do with, if I know where Jana's putting the ball, I know where to be. So me and Jana have two calls. Change, which means it's going over here, from there to there. John means she's returning straight. So when we're playing, I'm gonna prod and poke teams to see what's gonna happen. So one of the first things I'm asking Jana to do is, because we don't have play this game before, we turn it straight because I want to see how the guy's going to be talking to If he's going to hit a line drive shot that's hard as hell, we aren't going to do that again. But if he doesn't, he's going to become one of our targets. So, go ahead and go ahead and have the shot drop because if he hits it hard over here it's going out so he has to slow it down over and then I'll come over here and I'll get it from behind you know it might not be easy but I'll get it from behind so we created two angles for him I have one Jana has a second what are the other advantages to me returning to this guy because usually the guys on this side Let's keeps him back. Keeping him back keep him back keep an aggressive guy who wants to just get in there and take the next one and put it away it keeps him back one more shot so it's a good scenario it's a pretty good, but if I'm missing my returns and they're going to his forehand every time, probably not great. And there's days I'm like, every time he calls John, I promise you it's going over there. And I'm like, sorry, Todd. Well, you know what, but in Janice, like, let me tell you what, us guys at these tournaments have talked about it. The guys have served big. They're purposely serving to the girls' backhands because most girls, you guys play other girls in doubles, but you don't see the guys hard serves. So they go to hit a backhand. They don't have the strength and they aren't used to that speed of a guy serve. They hit it and it kind of just floats over the net. And then they come, what's I, what I call, you might not want to film this, Mary, is the oh shit shot. <laughs> so let's say I'm over here and I'm trying to protect Jana and that ball bounces right there. You know what's going through my head? Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh shit. Oh no, because oh no, I got to protect Jana, oh no. I got to protect the middle, oh no, oh no. I got to protect the left, <laughs> and, and he's coming in, firing the ball, <laughs> rightfully so, because that's such a ball, he's doing nothing wrong. He's doing right. You, you get a short as a guy in the mix, you get a short one, you better fire that ball. You better do something to create offense. So that's the one I'm at the net, and I'm just saying to myself, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh, no, no, Where no, do no. I go? You know, and, and you just get beat. No, no, no. That's how important a return is in pickleball. And mixed. Okay, so we now know why I would do that. If it's not working, it's going to his forehand every time. Abort mission. So let's talk about the next potential place that I can. Sure. Yeah. Um, Anybody ever has questions, just gotta raise your hand so we know. Didn't all of you says almost apply it to any doubles man? Sure. Mm, I mean, you know, no, not 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 necessarily an because player, because not? in the doubles, I'm gonna stay here. I'm not going over there. So she can now put it down here, depending on who the play. Because now I don't have to worry about poaching. So the change actually becomes more valuable in doubles, I think, than going straight sometimes. So you're not necessarily going to draw your men's doubles part. No, I, I never, I, yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 So you yeah. just rely well, on... Well, I didn't hear the question. What was the second question? So he's saying, well, once you do that in doubles, and, I, and it, it's really, I would never tell my doubles, because on my doubles, I'm not coming all the way over to here to take that first shot, because they're not targeting my, it, well, I play like this. If your partner's getting targeted, if your doubles partner's getting targeted 90% of the time, you need to find another doubles partner. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's sad to say, but you, you can't be you can't be on here only getting 5-10% of the ball with men's doubles. But wouldn't you still want to return to the game, even when you're playing doubles? 
Again, game time situation. Sure. If it's John Sperling over there, I want that to go straight. I want John to hit that ball every time. Because has any of you ever watched John? John's going to put a drop right here. He's not going to hurt us on this third shot drop, and that's all I'm looking for. He's not going to set us up with anything, but he's not going to hurt us. You know, Dan Fly, Gary Miller is another one. I'm going to try and keep it away. Gary Miller's over there. I'm going to tell her to hit it over here. Or right. Eric, Eric knows to hit it over there, doubles. Janet would hit over there, try to get it away from him. But Kim makes a great point. That's still keeping their angles away. You still can predict where it's going to go yes, when your partner yes, hits it. Yes, but it depends on who you play. A lot of these game time scenarios. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because when she returns it straight, chances are you're going to hit it straight anyhow. So my window becomes here. Jana has her window. My whole job is I don't want Jana running around like this on the court. I want Jan to be able to have this path right here, right here. Any movement this way is going to be done by me. So now that goes to say, there's times when I get pulled out wide, Jan obviously comes over and helps. But if we're controlling the point, we're controlling the, the rhythm of the shot, I want Jan coming up and back and forth, and I'm moving this way is what we're trying to do. So who's serving? I was John Sperling's first mix partner, and that's what he had me do every time. This was my lane. Yep. As soon as he served, he's like, go. Yep. And I would just go right up to the net every time. If he wanted to take the third, I just went up. What's the question? I don't think he has to play. If you have a lefty, the question is if you have a lefty, if the guy's a lefty, because now the guy's going to be over here. I don't think the woman has to play as far over here. She doesn't have to play here because this is her forehand. I think she can come on a little bit more over here and do. they can play a little a uh, little more equal. I would say now 70-30 probably just because you got two forehands in the middle. I go in as far as my back. So, yeah. uh, go ahead. Big you're difference. serving There's a big difference. Uh, I know. It's a good pretty much my whole thing. them got they got the uh stop on them now they're gonna serve Jana's back here I'm up here I'm gonna call a fake the reason why they just saw a switch so they got in their mind that we're gonna switch the whole purpose of a fake is again Jana can come, come just come up this window she can come over a little bit because she's got her forehand on her after that ball I watch her I watch the ball come as soon as it's flying through the air I'm not gonna get hit I come over here like I'm switching because Jana's still coming up and then I go back. How many times do they end up hitting it out? They hit it and hit it in the net because they look up and they're like, oh shoot, they're not switching after all and they have to adjust their shot. You don't want them to be able to know what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You want them to guess, are they faking, switching, staying? You want it to be, they can't even plan their attack because they don't know where Todd's gonna be. Yeah. So, but if you do the fake as the first one and they haven't seen you switch, it doesn't work as good. You can do it later in the game where they've seen you switch a couple times, but for the first one, I always like to do a switch. And I have a theory that if you do do a fake the first time, they probably think you're going to switch, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who stands there and goes like this to their partner and stick, right? So whatever works, but the idea is don't be predictable. So now they're going to serve to Jana. We are going to switch. Hang on one second. So, young lady on the stool, where would you think I would tell Jana to return the ball? Let's think, think, think this through for a second, guys. We're switching. Down the line. Jana's going to come over here. This. She has here. Yeah. Yeah. So very good. So yeah, because that way it's a hard, longer so shot. She yeah, already has to run over. So go straight. Again, if it's straight, she only has two angles. One here, one here. Now, I mean, I've seen girls that hit one shot, or even guys. Maybe like Gary hit one the other day. It was a line drive. It hit the thing. You can't do that twice in a row. I live with that. Chances are, we're switching. I'll tell her, John, she's returning this straight, so I know exactly where the ball's going. Jan is coming over here. Once we get to the kitchen, 
here's my and Janet's total philosophy. Trying to tell you, hey, Janet, if you get one ball that you want to set to fire, go ahead and reset that. But if it's coming back as a dink, the second shot, I want you, for, if you're both at the net, let's, for, let's start a fight. So I know with Janet, by the second or third ball, they were both at the kitchen, she's gonna start a fight and I've gotta be ready. I can't be thinking we're dinking because that's not what we do as a team. Does that make sense? And so now you might have a female partner that has a reverse philosophy where she's working the point. By the way, ladies, if you're playing on this side, which is the side that we play most of the time, right? This side is the hammer side. This is actually the most conducive side to putting the ball away. How cool is that? Right? This side is the one that keeps the ball in, in play going, right? This side gets to put it away a lot of the time. Hammer, rock. So that's Hammer pretty rock. cool. So I, have, I have a question um, regarding y'all's philosophy and your skill set is to be more aggressive when you're at the, at the net. So yes, it's going to be very rare for you to get into ding, 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 ding. You're going to fight. But I constantly hear you have got to Okay, but wait a second. Are they talking about doubles or are they talking about mixed? Okay. Sure, yeah. I've got to be able yeah. to do that, but I've got to be able to keep the woman. i got to be able to. This is my most important shot as a woman. Listen up. Your most important shot is this. Keeping it away from that aggressive guy and keep it going cross court. So what I do is I actually turn towards where I want the ball to go. So I'm just doing this the whole time. So I'm not having to twist. When you're dinking, are you over there or are you cutting back I'm to the middle? I'm Todd's got No, 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 I got the middle. I got the middle. Yeah. Again, I'm trying to protect Janet. Janet's going to steal all the balls. I'm staying here. I might come back to here. I'm staying here. I'm moving here. I'm moving my feet constantly. Yes, if they put a pop up, I'm coming to get it to help her out. That is the single most important shot for you to get. Yes, I agree. And that's something we've been working on with John Hughes. Instead of being at the net and the ball coming back here and her having to try to pick it up and back here, she's more, because her target now is here. That box becomes her and that girl. It's no longer this, it's this. So she's over here doing that so she can control the shot. And the second he gets greedy, of course I send one down there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. He's getting too dangerous to me. He's coming over too far. He's making me dink further over, further over. I don't like it, so I'm gonna keep him honest and just hit one back there. If the guy is on this side, do you target the guy? Say that one more time. If the guy on this team ends up over on this side for whatever reason. No, if, if the guy ends up over here, unless you have a, unless you know that that girl is way better than the guy, you have one target, one target only. It's the girl, 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 girl. Every single time, everything goes to the girl. I mean, now I think we played what one team one time that we had a really big mismatch yeah. and we had to say halfway through, let's go to him because he was definitely the weakest of the two players. She was getting everything back and he would just miss everything. So we just had to change our entire game plan. But again, that you, you gotta make adjustments in pickleball. That's no big deal. But for the most part, your girl, the girl's gonna be my target. It's gonna be just, we're two on one and we're trying to frustrate. And I get, I get frustrated a lot. And, and I know Janet sometimes think I'm, I'm very seldom ever frustrated with Janet. <laughs> I get frustrated because I wanna help but that team is doing such a good job. They're firing balls and stuff. And I, I can't get in. I can't. She's hit 12 balls, 15 balls, and I can't figure out a way to get in. That's my job to figure out. It's tough. It's hard, you know, and, and it's frustrating, but that's what your good teams do to you. So I think what he's saying is that if he ever did an eye roll, it would never, ever, under any circumstances, be toward his partner. Under any circumstances, never, no. ever, ever. I have walked off the court, and I will do it again, and I have warned partners, you do that again, I'm walking off the court. They yeah. think I'm kidding, I'm not. Yeah. Don't ever, if you have a partner that is eye rolling, you have a partner that is humiliating you, coaching you, body movements like this, you got the wrong partner, you may be gracious enough to finish the game, but nobody should have to <laughs> Understand frustration that I can't help versus I'm mad with Jen. It's always it's always different. But that's what good teams do is they frustrate you. 
You know, sometimes they'll just keep on hitting it. Yeah, slow, 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 slow. And I can't get in there to help. But what was it? Go ahead, go ahead, Jimmy. What is your theory? You just have to try and start a fight to get you to shot the This is Janice right. skill set. So, yes, it can, in answer to what you're saying is yes. If yes. that's somebody's skill set, yes. use it. So but I'm going to tell you right now, skill set Mary and I just played a game. And we played, who do we play, Mary? Jana and Nico. Oh, I, I forgot all about Jana. She wasn't even there. <laughs> so what else is Nico? Here's what Mary did. Mary's over here. Mary hit a reset to Nico. She got one step. She hit a reset to Nico. She got one. Now, I made six steps here. I'm just waiting for a pattern. I'm waiting for timing is all I'm trying to do. Mary did a beautiful job of setting Nico up. She hit three balls in the same spot. That third ball, there was a pattern. He, she would hit it, it would bounce. It would come straight back to uh, Mary, but he had no pace on it. So I waited, waited, waited. That third drop, as soon as Nico dropped his head, I came Wait. over here, he popped it up, going to Mary again, and I put it away. So that I'm looking for Janet to force him to and put I his said, head down. So Once his head goes down, I'm coming to help her. Do you, mean, do you remember four years ago where we would watch Lucy, I mean, all the top players, and, and Simone and Lucy, and they would just sit there dinking yeah. 50 times to each yeah. other? Yeah. Those days are done. Yeah, those are the days. They're going to take you out before that. You can't get away with that anymore. They, you have to be like the best dinker in the world and lure them into that game where you're going to outdink them. Because I can tell you, if you haven't done something by the second, or third, guess who's being set up? Oh, that would be you. I don't care if it's a lob, I don't care if it's a dink, I don't care if you're going behind and checking That's the guy. You bet, if you're dinking six, seven times, your partner's going, uh-oh, uh -oh. What do they say at the poker table? If you don't know who the sucker is, it's gotta be you. So, very simple, you know? But if Todd were playing with somebody who was an exceptional dinker, he might just encourage that a little because my skill set might be attacking, yeah. he'd be like, Jenna, you're okay at thinking, but let's do what you do best. Yeah. There's no re right or wrongs. I want you to hear this loud and clear in pickleball. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, you're never supposed to do that. If it works for you, it works for you. But you have to be on the same page as your partner. That's all. I don't care what you do. And the way I played with Mary was a total different game, and it still worked for me and Mary because Mary had a certain skill set. We used her skill set and I worked figured out a way to get in with Mary's skill set because she was dropping it really good. So you so, will have a this, female partner who likes to take the third shot drop with their backhand. Would so you let's say go ahead and never do that. 
No, you would say, well, you better land it. And if I see you're really good at that, this guy can just run in and take the next one. So there's no wrong. So now, here's Jan and I. We're getting ready. So, yeah, back it over there. Because she's serving over there. He's on the other side. Very simple communication. Everybody see that? We did that. I have to say John. So Jan knows that the turn is straight. We're switching. It's all the communication we need. you call it off if if you if you get an awesome serve and you and you just have yes. to how do yes. you call it off i'll call it off if i see she's stretched i'll just say stay keep it simple yeah but it's got to be quick you got you got to make a quick decision and it is what it is uh, i will tell you women especially a lot higher level you get and then janet would go if you get a return try to get to your forehand side instead of trying to hit it in your backhand Guys are trying to drive it to your forehand to take advantage of your weakness. Nullify that by running around to your forehand. So, <coughs> Up, they pop the ball up, you 
and get it back at them, they're out of position. Here's one thing Janice picked up that I absolutely love. I'm a big lover, especially over women. No offense. Jana will sometimes, if she doesn't start the fight, she'll go two, think, third, think. She'll lob it over that female in that corner. From here to that corner is your longest distance for a lob. Or, for me, from here to that corner is the distance. Once Jana does that, especially if Jana's trying to, say Jana's trying to get up and they're keeping it, and she's here, she throws that lob, and now buys her the time to get the rest of the way up there, and I'm moving in. So, we had, we had questions with this, and we did go to John. Throw a lot of lobs. Defending the lob after you throw it. My philosophy, everybody's throwing bad lobs. If you throw a lob, and they're only gonna step back one step, you better jump back real quick. Don't keep moving, just jump back one big step, hold your position, paddle's high, so where should your paddle be? Low. Exactly. If they're hitting it from here, you better be ready like this here, because it's coming in an angle like this. If it's a lob where they have to step back two or three feet, you know, they're coming back to here. What do I tell you, Jenna? We get in here. Because we got to take away the angle from them. Because if we stay back here and they hit the return and they hit it here, that angle is what's going to kill us. The angle on the ground and the side. So we have to close that angle down. But you can't come in here and be like this. Because guess what? The ball's coming. If you just do a lob up there hitting an overhead, you better be, depending, if I hit it to her forehand, I'm going to be here because I got to cover this line. Janet's going to be out here like the same thing because the chances of her hitting a hard overhead to Janet's corner is rare. So Janet on that's got the middle, I got the sideline. It's just, and we're, we're covering that net and we're just ready to fight. This is not for the faint of heart because you're running into the fire. Mm -hmm. But do it in a way where you're ready for it and assume it's coming right at you. By the way, Todd mentioned the love for the woman. I already told you what your first most important shot is, women. Another one I'd like you to develop is that lob over the girl's left shoulder that he either has to run for or whatever. I want to see you get that shot if you want to go to the next level. All of a sudden, everybody's going to want to start playing mixed doubles with you here, but they're going to not know this because you consistently can do this shot. You can throw a lob. I'll tell you when we get to the third shot I want to see. And the best lob I've ever seen Janet throw, she set it up beautiful. She's at an angle. She's dinking with a girl. They hit two dinks. The guy moved over the line. Jana put it just a little easy one down the line. The guy he had just put a little, he hit a reset that was a little high. And Jana went like that and threw it over that corner because she's pushed the guy over here. She's dislodged the guy from protecting the girl. Once she did that, the girl's all on her own. Well, she's over here dinking. So Jana just threw a little easy cross court lob, landed in the corner. She stood here, he's still over there. Nobody could touch it. It was the most. She set it up beautiful by two or three shots. It's a new shot for me. Is it? But she's doing it well. Mary has inspired me on that one. I have to say. Bob's really are great has. if they use wisely. I am not against, especially if you have a guy. Let's say, uh, everybody know Gary Miller, skinny Gary Miller. Gary Miller's big on driving tech. So if you put a return here, Gary's firing it, and Gary does really well coming in. He fires it, and he's ready for the next shot, and he's at the line. Gary comes in quick. If Gary's over there, and I know that's what Gary's gonna do, I know he's coming in hard, and the girl's at the net, on my return, I will lob the girl. I'm not trying to beat her. I'm, all I'm trying to do is make Gary stop. He's gonna probably have to go back in, or if I get lucky, the girl's gonna think, oh, Gary's in trouble, I'm gonna go get it. She's gonna hit, it's gonna go out. So don't be afraid to use a return lob over the girl. But you have to do it when the guy's very aggressive and coming into the net. You gotta recognize the opponent you're playing. If he just hits the ball and stays back there, the lob's not doing you any good because he's just gonna move two steps and he's gonna hit it back. So. Okay, so let's play a couple and let's see. We'll do an ask the audience about what was good. Now remember the basics we were talking about last week. Deep serve, deep return. That doesn't go away. Third shot dry, third shot drop, all acceptable. Just do them well. Who, Jana? Jana down the line. To, down the line to Ricky. Yep.
bounced in the front of them. I came up, I hit that ball from right here because I knew where she was going, I knew how to protect them. Now, if that would have been a Dan Fly, a Rich Lively, or FB, somebody who's gonna fire that ball behind me, I'm gonna have to be a little more cautious. But here's what the thing would have been. If that would have saved me a Dan Fly, I would have said Mary, if she would have said the guy, I would have said no way, no Dan Fly. We would have gone to the girl. We would have made that just because we know Dan's gonna try and drive that ball at Chan as hard as he possibly can. Okay, so let's talk about two other places where I would potentially return and what can happen if I do. I think we all have covered what happens when I go down the line to the guy. Let's talk about the second place I could return, which is a good option, about two feet from the baseline, right about there. Yep. I'm making them fight over. Mm -hmm. the, obviously a great return. If you're getting it to his forehand, go a little further. If you've got a real aggressive guy, you might have to go a little further. But let's talk about the new third place. Yes, Debbie, tell me, right, right there. there. This is new, I gotta tell you, two weeks ago when John introduced this to us, I was like, okay, you tell, you break it to Todd that I'm gonna try, I'm gonna return it over there to the girl and that she's gonna go down his line. And the second it was introduced to Todd, Todd was like, yeah, no, I get it, okay. Well, because I was all I have to know is that that's going there, now my position becomes more here. So I it's no longer the T, I'm over here to protect this line. So I'll say to, John, to Todd, change. And that means I'm going over there. So that just means he has to cover his line. But if, if they have already determined, all right, they've already determined he's a scary guy. And every time I hit the ball to him, he's he, he's having success with it. Then I'm going to get it as far away from him as I can and get a free point by just trying to hit it to the weaker player. Just a free point because I'm assuming her return won't be as good, her, her third shot won't be as good. Yes. You're trying to make sure she hits it with her forehand. So Deb, you were the one that, where where, where would you hit it? Um, right in the middle. Right in the middle. Towards the line. I'm trying make to maybe go off court. He can't reach it. Lofty yeah. to the deep yeah. corner. Yeah. He's gonna have as to reach As far away it. from him as possible that forces her out of position. Guys, this is a new thing. I promised you two months ago. People were saying, oh, you don't go there. You go there or there. Now it's there, there, or there. I promise you, it is. And if he's covering the line, so I won't go, I won't return it back down the line, I'll do a drop shot over here. If he is covering the line, if you have a team that, that is doing this to you, absolutely, you would try to, because guess what, that opens up an angle for you to come back to me, buddy. Yeah. Jenna, you know are you, Jenna, are you doing that on a higher, slower shot? over here to the forehand? Or are you trying to drive it? I my partner and I have called change, and on any serve she gives me, I'm gonna be putting it But are you it. hitting this ball hard, or are you, are you pace, allowing- Pace, always pace, pace, you want pace, yeah, you want pace on it, yeah. Always some pace, but always some loft, right? Just a little, because you're only hurting yourself if you don't loft your return, because you're the only one trying to get here. She's right. trying to stress her a little bit on it, because as a guy, I've done my job, if she's stressed over there, and she's trying to hit a third shot drop in this corner, that's a difficult shot. That's a, but I've now scared her enough that she's trying to do that, but Jenna's gonna take care of that for me over there, so I don't have to worry about it. So that's why when we say as a guy, you gotta play big, that's exactly what, if you're in their head that they're trying to hit a crazy shot like that, you've done your job. And test her. If she's cursing your partner down the line, it's like, oh, touche, yeah. good for you. But if she's not, I probably just hit the ball to the weaker player. Yay. That's always the goal, right? So let's try that. It's to me, it's a weaker player. Again, over to me one more time. So now 
have one other from, from this here, guys, over there. We don't know what the guy's going to do yet. I'm going to tell Jana, watch your mind. I'm telling Jana, I'm going to try to get it over to his back here. Be ready that he can't slap a forehand down your line, and backhand down your line. Be a little more protective of the line. I just, and I'm plotting is all I'm doing, trying to see how he's going to hit that ball at the beginning of the game. third shot to the person that's already at the net. I and mean, then you're standing there waiting for it no matter where. Todd doesn't feel good that he breaks the rule. Okay. <laughs> and if you have a partner that has a really good third shot drop to the person standing at the net, like they'll say, We're here, so we'll show you guys. Whatever. Jen and I actually have a play here. Go ahead and serve it. Where's the ball? Go let Jen serve it. So, return it to me somewhere in the middle here. Okay, so I want you guys to know three things. So I hit a drop to the guy. I hit pretty good drops. That's my skill set. John and I worked on that for numerous hours. We, we talked about it. We worked on it. That's John Shaw. Did you see what Jana did? We know this. Jana's coming up. And I want her with the forehand. I'm trying to get that guy to get her a pop-up that she can put away. I want her now to be intimidating to that guy. I can't tell you how many times I dropped one. Jana's coming up, and the guy looks up, and then he hits the ball like that, and it goes in the net. Because Jana just scared him. He didn't know what was going on. He was going to come back in here, but she's taking the gap away. It, it dropped, it bounced, he's in with the back end. He has nowhere to go but a high ball to Jan, and he's scared. So he ends up dropping the net a lot of times. Don't come in quietly. Make noise. Be intimidating. You know you hate when someone does that to you. Yeah. Then yeah. be the one that does it to them. Yeah. I mean, legally, you can't scream or yell. You can't make... But no one says you can't shuffle your thing. So... And, and as she's coming in, I want her... Because she's over here. I want her with her forehand ready to fight. If that ball comes over here, I'll take care of it. Because I've now slid over, and if the guy has a good skill set, where he drops it over here, well, he might do it once. If he does it twice, we'll make an adjustment. Ninety percent of the time, it goes right where we want. Yeah. To Todd. They're 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 going. I don't know who this crazy lady yeah. is. Because he's not scared. He gave me a marshmallow. He's now giving me offense. Remember we talked about offense, defense, a couple times weeks ago. I now take that offense. I have to create something fast, so I lob it over her. Now he has to go get it. There's chaos and confusion. Jan and I are sitting here talking about where we're going to go to lunch. Just waiting for the ball to come back, and then we put it away. Push them all the time. It could be just not with power. It could be what? Sliding the ball behind them, throwing it over their head. There's a lot of different twists and turns you can make a pitch ball. Yes, Mary. Okay, back where Diane served to you, and you said you're going to serve it over to here. Okay? Okay, and Todd... She sees him moving down there, so we are all going to be hitting against people like you. Yeah. And we see that Todd moves over. Where should she have hit it? She should try to go back to me every time. Okay. Unless you have a unique skill set called a great drive down the line, which I would love women and anybody here to get that shot. Because it kind of checks. First of all, it's Todd's back now, right? Right. I would love you to get the shot that just comes over and dies. I would love if you got that shot because it keeps an aggressive guy like Todd away from the middle. It's another shot I would love you to work on. But you better hit a good one. Right, because I can see that you're protecting that line. Yeah. So would I hit it hard to you to keep you back? Or should I try to angle it? Always. Okay. Always. But that's, that's the cat and mouse of the game. She's trying to hit your return that you can't get the shot you want. And then we're trying to force you to give us something we want and not give you guys something. It's, it's a constant ebb and flow. Who can be the better team of picking on the other team? But Mary, not necessarily hard. There's a difference between deep and hard. We got that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Deep. Deep. Because why? You're, you're in the cat seat. Yes, Kim, like Kim said. You're in the cat seat. Now you're back there. You need to buy your 
yourself time to get up. Right. Okay, one more point, and then the next team, who's ready, get ready to come in. Let's do one more serve. <laughs> so here's something we got to talk about right there. Janet did something very beautiful. She hit every shot knowing and making them hit her the ball back that she wanted. She hit it low and hard. They popped it up. She hit it again. They hit it high again. She hit it again. She forced them to give her what she wanted. That's a skill. So remember how we talked about that drill where you're hitting it to everybody? See, she, she made it go into position. She made it go to a spot and make them force, they're, they're fighting, everything they're doing is fighting, 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 while we're controlling the entire point. Should they not have tried a third shot drop instead of driving it down the middle? Um, if you are gonna drive it, I would drive it to the hole. You know, Janice coming up, try to take it. That, it, it becomes now the skill set. Like, I would no, never tell Janet not to drive, but to drop, because her skill set is a third shot drive. Now, I will say, Janet, don't drive it to the guy at the at the net, drive it in the hole. You have to be cognizant. If you got a guy that's playing like this, it gets scary. But Jan's good enough at doing it because she'll see it sometimes, then drive it behind him if he comes over. So it has to be your partner's skill set. And she like Mary was hitting beautiful drops. So Mary, keep hitting those drops, and I will get by the second or third one, I'm gonna time it and I'm gonna get in there. You just hit a drop, their head goes down. As soon as I see their head down, I'm coming. So. I want you to see a visual. Come up to the net a second. I want you to all see this visual and don't unsee this. Now we're at the net and we're attacking. I'm attacking at her, okay? More than I'm attacking here. I'm attacking at her. My whole game, in mix, in mix, in mix, is this, 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 this. It's cross court, it's cross court. My focus is cross court, all cross court. Because the woman's cross court. I, my whole game is developing shots that are cross court logs, cross court attacks. sure you figure out a way to get protect okay. you better make that ball either bounce right here if you're gonna come back where I can I literally have to do nothing with it or you better go at Janet because you just told yourself by putting yourself out of position
thing also with Ruth's guy talking about? Did you see her serve? Did you see how easy her serve is? When you're serving, you have offense on the ball. You got it. You've got to keep offense. If you hit an easy middle of the court thing, China's able to control that, and we're going to grant gain real estate on you. Serves are just important. Returns, every, this everything kind of comes in together. You've got to not give them anything easy. Our goal right now, what we're thinking about, is keep these two back. Yeah. They're already back. You're going to keep them back. Okay. That doesn't mean. Sorry. Do that again. That doesn't mean I go like this. Turn is, but it got set up by her weak serve. Then Janet was able to put a nice paceful return on it, and then I was able to. Only reason why I hit it to him was because he was trying to do what he's supposed to do in mids. He was covering the middle, so now it opens up the side. It's he only he can only do so much. What you can do is on that third, don't fight that ball. Try to drop it. Do it. Slow it down. And make it bounce as much as you can to buy yourself some time. down the hole. But think about this one thing. If you really think we're switching, let's take it to the next level. Where are you going to serve the ball? Where are you? If you know, if we got a team that we know switching, the girls over here, we know the guy's going to come over here. Try to serve that ball over here. Make her come. And now, best thing in the world, stay. Now we've got them confused. If you can serve one where she's all the way over here, they can't call a switch. Or if they keep the switch, it's wide open. But then it becomes you in the court. All you gotta do is keep it in the court. Think about that. When you got a big hole like that, don't try to overpower it. You don't have to. You just gotta put it in the hole. But if you serve me right here, thank you. I'm halfway over all Yes. Day. Yeah, you you helped thank us. You. I'll come to you over there. Shut up. Hey. Serve it deep. There you go. Ah. Oh. Hear what I said? You gotta sometimes show forgiveness. You mentioned um, when she is up at the line over in that corner and she's doing, you know, the dinking, we'll say, and somebody lobs over her head, you go behind her and you cover that, right? Yes. So the okay. Only one Jenna Good job, Rich. Jana's right there. And they lob it. She can go right here. She can hit it. Nope. She can get it. If it goes over her head, I'm going it, but Jana has to know. Jana's sliding over to here. Because now I'm going to go straight. That's what I want to know. So audit. So she sees you go behind you to 
covered. She knows to come over she automatically. She knows to come over, yes. And then now you cover yeah. this side, right? As soon as I go that way, she comes this way. What I'm hoping to do is hit a drop over here. They come back to me. I able to hit another drop. We still now in the wrong pattern we right. want, but we're both at the kitchen. That's good. It's good. That's what I want to know. Okay. What are we doing? Wait a minute. You're, you're not moving this one, are you? Oh. <laughs> I just took a ride. <laughs> I went up through the lob over her because even if I throw a bad lob, she's not going to hit it hard enough to beat it. Because chances are I throw a lob up on the coming net, even if she hits it down, I, I probably can handle it. Until she showed me that I can't handle it, they have to switch, they got confusion. They got the fun, guys. Time though, so I could get there. I know my speed. It worked perfectly. I know my speed. Yeah, 
Good play. Way to get in there to the net. Todd, is it is it better to do it on the yeah. paddle or behind your back, or does it make any difference? I like the paddle yeah. just because you know. But some people say, well, you can see the hand motion. I'm like, if you're paying that good attention, you can do whatever. You okay. You have that signal. Well, you slap the paddle. That alerts your partner. You're giving a signal. So you want to hit like that? Give it the walk. Okay, can anybody see anything on that right there? But here's, here's your footwork right here. She's playing doubles. She's playing. So now she's trying to hit it. Her body motion is this way. But that's her target. Her target, her sink should have been right here because this is her target. But she, because we're so used to playing doubles and being in this position, the ball came here and she's trying. She's trying to get it over. Turn your feet and get that ball right there. And because after you learn this, then she gives you something. So guys, I'm getting mixed feedback. Some are like, I love that we're just watching this. You're sharing all your secrets. I'm in glued, enthralled. I love it. Don't stop. How do people like to get out of court and play? Show of hands, who would like to have us continue demonstrating with bringing Four people in. Show of hands. Who would like to just get out there and do it yourself? More. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. If you want to practice, go practice. But Jenna and I can only watch one court. Right. right. So we'll so watch this court. You guys are welcome to go over there. Not three people. Were there four? Who want to? It's ridiculous. It always overheats. And then does it have to ring? Yep, I have to sit it has for. Has to cool off. Yep. Wow. So that's why I had Marina hand me the water bottle so I could put it on here. Not only did she hit it to the girl, but she also got it to her back end. The only thing I would like to see a little more, she hit it slow, is if you could just got it to balance a little bit. But you did everything else right. The ball was just a little high ball. watching that open spot over there. 
simple mega bounce to her backhand got the point. See how easy the game can be? I think, I think. coming over here, she should be like this. Her power should be like this, because if the ball comes, when you're like this, that means you're defending like this. Well, I don't want her defending over here because I'm gonna take care of that for her. I want her protecting this window with the forehand. So when you come over, come over with a forehand and be ready to get it up. Because he's running over there, try to hit it with some pace deep to try and make him run. Because not only he's got to run over there, but that's his backhand on top of it. So it'll be a double jeopardy for him. Team. 